In Greek mythology, Zeus is the king of the gods and ruler of Mount Olympus. While he is the most powerful of the gods, there are a few beings and concepts that Zeus is wary of. Nyx Nyx is a captivating and enigmatic figure in Greek mythology. Nyx is the primordial goddess of the night. Primordial deities in Greek mythology are the very first beings that existed, emerging at the creation of the universe, even before the Titans and the Olympian gods. As such, Nyx is one of the oldest deities, representing an elemental and fundamental aspect of the world. According to Hesiod's Diogony, Nyx is born from chaos, the initial void or emptiness that preceded the universe. She's one of the first beings to emerge from chaos, alongside Erebus, Darkness, Gaia, Earth, and Tartarus, the Abyss. Nyx is often associated with Erebus, the personification of darkness. Together, they produce several offspring, including Aether, Light, Hemera, Day, Moros, Doom, Thanatos, Death, Hypnos, Sleep, The Fates, Nemesis, Retribution, and many others. Intriguingly, many of Nyx's children represent various aspects or phenomena of life, many of which have a dark or ominous undertone. Some myths suggest that Nyx can give birth on her own, without a male counterpart. For instance, she is said to have birthed Moros, Doom, the Kyrs, Death Spirits, and Nemesis, Retribution, without Erebus. Nyx is often depicted as either a winged goddess or riding a chariot, draped in stars and bringing the veil of night over the world. Her counterpart, Hemera, Day, is her daughter, and they work in tandem but never coexist. When Nyx enters the sky, Hemera leaves, and vice versa. Nyx's abode is said to be in the depths of Tartarus, the great abyss in the underworld. She lives there with several of her offspring. Nyx's enigmatic and potent nature, combined with her primordial origins, makes her a unique and awe-inspiring figure in Greek mythology. Despite not being as commonly mentioned as the Olympians, Nyx is tremendously powerful. Even Zeus, the king of the gods, is said to respect her and avoids angering her. While they don't have a lot of direct interaction in the myths, there's an interesting story in which their paths cross. According to some sources, when Zeus was angry at Hypnos, the god of sleep and one of Nyx's sons, for putting him to sleep at the request of Hera, Hypnos fled to his mother, Nyx, for protection. When Zeus followed him to seek vengeance, Nyx defended her son, and Zeus had no choice but to relent, as he did not want to anger the ancient and powerful goddess. This story illustrates the respect and wariness that even Zeus, the king of the gods, had for Nyx and her powers. The influence of Nyx is seen even in contemporary culture. For instance, the term Nyctophobia denotes a fear of the dark or night and is derived from her name. Morai The Morai, commonly known as the Fates in English, are three of the most enigmatic and influential deities in Greek mythology. Their primary role is to oversee the destinies of gods and mortals alike, ensuring that the natural order and the predetermined paths of life are maintained. The Morai are typically represented as three sisters who work in tandem to determine the lifespan and fate of every living being. Clotho, spinner she is responsible for spinning the thread of life for every individual, marking the beginning or birth of a person's life. Lachesis, allotter or drawer of lots she measures the thread of life with her measuring rod. This measurement decides how long one's life will be. Atropus, inevitable or unchangeable the oldest of the three. Atropus is tasked with cutting the thread of life with her shears, determining the manner and time of a person's death. The concept of fate and the influence of the Morai appear in many Greek tragedies and stories. For instance, in Sophocles' Oedipus Rex, the tragic hero Oedipus tries to escape the fate foretold by an oracle but tragically ends up fulfilling it. The fates are considered to be older than most gods and are sometimes viewed as primordial deities emerging at the early stages of the cosmos. Even the mightiest gods, including Zeus, are often depicted as respecting the decrees of the fates and are bound by their decisions. Zeus is often involved in prophecies, which are closely tied to the concept of fate. While he can act on prophecies or try to avoid them, for instance, swallowing his first wife, Métis, to prevent a prophecy of being overthrown by his son, he cannot change the outcomes preordained by the Morai. 
This illustrates the idea that fate is a force even the gods cannot entirely control. Typhon Typhon is one of the most formidable adversaries in Greek mythology, often characterized as a monstrous and chaotic force opposed to the established order of the gods. Typhon is often described as a giant serpentine monster, a fire-breathing dragon with numerous heads that never sleep. He is the personification of volcanic forces, destructive winds, and the cataclysmic dangers lurking beneath the earth. Typhon's emergence is a threat not only to mortals but also to the very dominion of the gods. Accounts vary, but according to Hesiod's Theogony, Typhon is the offspring of Gaia, Earth, and Tartarus, the deepest abyss of the underworld. This birth was Gaia's response to the imprisonment of the Titans, her children by Uranus, by the Olympian gods. Typhon's union with Echidna, a half-woman, half-serpent creature, produced several of Greek mythology's most infamous monsters. Their offspring include Cerberus, the three-headed dog guarding the underworld, the Lernaean Hydra, the Chimera, and the Sphinx, among others. The English word typhoon, referring to a tropical storm or hurricane, is believed to be derived from Typhon's name due to his association with powerful and destructive winds. The most famous myth involving Typhon is his battle against Zeus. Typhon sought to overthrow Zeus and take control of the cosmos. The ensuing battle was colossal, with Typhon hurling mountains and causing massive upheavals. However, Zeus, armed with his thunderbolts and aided by the sickle once used to castrate Uranus, eventually defeated Typhon. After his defeat, Typhon was buried under Mount Etna in Sicily, or, according to other sources, various other volcanic regions. His fiery breath and continued attempts to escape are said to be the cause of volcanic eruptions. The cycle of patricide and the overthrowing of one's predecessor is a recurring theme in Greek mythology, especially within the lineage of the ruling sky gods. Even gods as powerful as Zeus could not entirely evade their destinies and had to find clever ways to maneuver around them. Zeus and his offspring Fear of prophecy, Zeus was well aware of the pattern that had emerged, a son overthrowing his father. Like his predecessors, he was informed of prophecies suggesting that he too would be overthrown by one of his offspring, Metis and Athena. One prophecy told that Metis, Zeus's first wife, would bear children more powerful than their father. The first would be a daughter, and the second, a son, would overthrow Zeus. To prevent this, Zeus swallowed Metis whole when she was pregnant with their first child. Eventually, Zeus suffered from an unbearable headache, and when Hephaestus split open his head, out sprang Athena, fully grown and clad in armor. By consuming Metis and subsequently giving birth to Athena himself, Zeus effectively prevented the prophecy concerning a son from coming to fruition. Thetis and Achilles Another prophecy stated that Thetis, a sea nymph, would bear a son greater than his father. While Thetis was not one of Zeus's consorts, the prophecy still alarmed him. To prevent any chance of this prophecy affecting his reign, Zeus arranged for Thetis to marry a mortal, Peleus. Their offspring was Achilles, the legendary hero of the Trojan War. While Achilles was indeed mighty, he was not a threat to Zeus's rule, given his mortality. While Zeus is often wary or cautious about these entities and prophecies, it's not always due to fear in the typical sense. Instead, it's a recognition of their power, importance, or the inevitability of fate.